Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to NIEVS Home School. This is Rahila Fedosi, Assistant Teacher of English Day Shift. Today we, are do, we will do a class of class 7. Our subject is to, our today's subject is agricultural studies. Today we will do lecture number 5 and the assigned SW will be 4. Okay, now come to our lesson. Today we will read chapter 1. Chapter 1, Lesson 7 and Lesson 8. Lesson 7. Diversification of products of animal in agriculture. Fish. Bangladesh is a country of hundreds of rivers, canals, swamps, ponds, natural and artificial lakes. For that matter, this country is blessed with different kinds of sweet water fishes. For this reason, fish is a popular food item. Thus, the Bengalis has a distinct identity as a great enthusiast of rice and fish eaters. Pisciculture is thus a very important branch of agriculture in our country. Culture of fish in ponds and other water reservoirs is profitable too. Therefore, a subsidiary industry for pro producing fish feed has been developed. Okay, so here we can understand that besides fish production, the there is also the producing fish feed has been developed. Nowadays, most of the domestic requirement of fish is made by the fish farms of our country. Experts predict that dependence on cultured fish will increase day by day. In the initial stage, mainly carbs like rui, katal, mrigel were cultured. Boys underlined here, in an ancient period, in initial stage, mainly carbs, rui, katal, migel were cultured. For the last few years, fishes like pangash and tilapia have become very popular. So, for last years, we are there are the production of pangash and tilapia is day by day increasing. In addition to these fishes, the tasteful the tasteful fishes like pabda, koi, magur, and mola are also being cultured so we have to underline this that means we have to memorize this also tiger streams are being cultured in the coastal saline water and giant fresh streams in the fresh water okay we have to underline this sentence also then a lot of foreign currency is being earned by exporting these fishes crabs Though crabs are not very popular in this country as a food item, these are being commercially cultured in the, some areas of the country as an exporting item. Chicken and eggs. Rising poultry in the rural household was a regular practice for meeting the family demands of animal protein. Since independence of Bangladesh, poultry farming has gained importance. But poultry farming as a household activity has always been a long tradition. A local chicken is delicious, but it has low level egg production capacity. Regular poultry farms grow various breeds of layers and broilers, and their management practices are also different. Next one, ducks and duck eggs. Production of ducks and duck eggs are popular among the farmer families not only in the areas where natural water reservoirs like house, bowers and bills exist, but also in the areas where water is available, in ponds and canals. Among the different domestic duck varieties, Khaki Camp Bell is popular for its high level egg production. So we have to underline this line and we have to know the name Khaki Camp Bell. Next, other birds. Pigeon raising commercially has been popular in this country for a long time. At present, the production of quail and its eggs attracts the farmer. So, in, among the other words, pigeon and quail are now produced commercially. Goat. Among the ruminant animals, goat is quite popular. We get milk, meat and hide from goats. So, what do we get? Milk, meat and hide. Several varieties of goats are domesticated, but among them, the best local variety is the black bengal. 
So what is the best local variety? Black Bengal. This medium sized animal is non-violent and easy to be raised. Meat obtained from this black bengal is of very high quality and taste. Lamb Though lamb is available throughout Bangladesh, it is commercially grown only in a few areas. Meat obtained from lambs also meets the demand of animal protein. Lambs are less attacked by diseases and small amount of land is needed for farming them. Moreover, wool is made from them. So what, you, what do we get from lamb? Wool and lambs are less attacked by diseases and very little space is needed for producing lamb. Cow To the farmers of Bangladesh, Cow is the best choice among the large animals. Domestication of cow probably has started with agricultural civilization. As if there is a spiritual relationship between a farmer and his cows, the indigenous bred cows are smaller in size. So our own cows are smaller in size. But they need a light ration of feed and they are somewhat tolerant to diseases that means they are suitable for our farmer to cultivate some indian bred cows are raised here for mainly milk for this for the same reason some breeds of cow from australia and new zealand have become popular amongst our dairy farm farmers buffalo in some of areas of Bangladesh, buffalo farming is popular. Milk from buffaloes is liked by sweet meat product producer as its, as its milk has higher density. So why do the sweet meat businessmen like this? Because its milk has higher density. Several breeds of buffaloes are raised in our country at different selected areas. Goats, lambs, cows, and buffaloes give us high quality meat, milk, hides, and wool. So, what do we get from these domestic animals? Meat, milk, hides, and wool. Besides that, the horns, the horns and bones are raw materials for some industries for the production of certain products. That means you also get the raw materials, bones and horns. Okay. As a country located at temperate region of the world and as the country blessed with hundreds of rivers, Bangladesh has a great variety in agricultural products. Proper breeding and farming of this diverse flora and fauna promises a bright future for Bangladesh. That means we have a huge chance to produce a lot of domestic animals and we have a huge chance to produce these animals and the um, other things like fish or chicken all of these things and we can make our Bangladesh a good we can reach it in a good position in the world now come number lesson 8 agriculture in Bangladesh and culture the harvest festival that means in our country the cultures are mainly dependent on agriculture how we will know this in this lesson First, the Harvest Festival or the Nobanno Utshav. All the members of a farmer's family become very happy when after a hard toiling, the new harvest of paddy is brought home and stacked on the threshing yard, <coughs> leaving behind all the odds like natural calamities, diseases and pests, etc. <coughs> So the anxieties from being looted away. <clears throat> they become busy in thrashing, winnowing, drying and storing the paddy in the granary. On the other hand, 
the female members remain busy with dheki in husking the paddy to get some fresh rice and rice flour so the female women worked with dheki to husk the paddy and they get the rice and the rice flour besides boiled rice they prepare rice pudding and cakes out of the fresh rice the seasonal workers of the farmhouse get new dresses and other gifts from the household chief domestic helps get new shari bangles lace ribbon etc without going anywhere these things can be bought from the hawkers in exchange of new rice nobody is turned away not even the beggars that means at the time of nobanno they are so happy for getting their new crops and they even not returned not even turn away the beggar from their home in bare hand everybody belonging to any religion caste or sect and of any age group joins the festival known as nobanno the time and location may vary depending on agricultural environment and the harvest of the main crop in case of boro rice it may happen in the bengali month of boishak and in such in case and in such case bengali new year festival may get blended with that of nobanno utshop so we have to underline here that in case of boro rice it may happen in the bengali month of boishak <clears throat> and in case of amun rice harvest the nobanno festival may get mingled with the autumn festival in both cases festivals get a grand gala nature that means with the new crop the farmers the society of the farmers got a new gala nature grand gala nature now bengali new year the first of boishak is the bengali new year day everywhere there creates a festive atmosphere centering the new year day an important part of bengali new year festival is mela mela starts in the last day of bengali year that is chaitra sankranti so what is the last day of bengali year called chaitra sankranti and in the morning of the first day of boishak the villagers buy all their household utensils including earthen pot juri chopper that is da etc the businessmen in the markets entertain their customers on the first day of boishak the customers are entertained with sweets for paying their previous dues the another name of this ceremony is hal khata that means opening a new book The New Year festival is enriched with jatra pala, kobi gan, and several types of games and sports. Village fair. Village fair is mostly connected with the Nabanno Utshab and New Year festival. In such fair, the small traders find a place to open up his shop with various essential commodities. The entrepreneurs of different rural industries bring their products for making in this fair. The weavers sell their products like shari, gamcha, and lungi. The artisans bring their earthen pottery and other earthen products. Iron smiths come with finished products like knives, sickles, spades, plow, etc. Various bamboo-based commodities are also sold in this fair. Different food items are prepared and sold in the, in such fair. In such village fair, jatra or palagan is organized for the recreation of the villagers and this continue for the whole night people from far away join this enjoyment there these village fairs are actually the part of the rural economic social and cultural meeting fair so from this full chapter we came to know that how agriculture and culture are mingled in our day to day life now <clears throat> today we will do a creative questions from our book the first question we will do today first i am reading the stem rofik a small businessman came back to his village from town after suffering a loss in his business 
It was very tough for him to meet the daily requirements of his six-member family. Besides, a small house in the village, he owned a medium-sized pond and 50 decimals of crop land. Eventually, as he was advised by his uncle, Altaf Master, he began to work on one of his rural assets. Soon, besides meeting the family demand for animal protein, he made a handsome profit. Later, he started engaging his other agricultural assets. Now, here we come to know about Rofik that he has already in a loss and he is suffering uh, from want with his six members in his family. He has a pond and he has 50 decimals of crop land. Now, here with the advice of Mr. Altaf, he began to work on his rural assets. That means he began to use his pond and crop land. Now come to the question. A. In how many ways did men collect food from before they started agriculture? Boys, in our chapter 1, we have already learned this that people collected their food in two ways. Before they started agriculture, hunting animals and collecting fruits. Now come number B. Explain the reasons why banana is called a season neutral food. Okay, from our book we can also get this answer that in Bangladesh different varieties of fruits are grown round the year. Specific fruits are grown in every season. But banana can be grown throughout the year because the difference in climate does not affect its growth. That is why banana is called a season neutral fruit. Okay, now come number C. Describe how Rofik started earning profit by engaging, engaging his agricultural wealth. We have already came to know that Mr. Rofik is in a want with his six family members and he has some um, village wealth like he has 50 decimals of crop plant and a medium sized pond. Now we will see how he can he can start earning his profit. Okay. Rofik returned to his village after suffering a flop in his business and he was in a loss. So to solve his problem, he decided to employ his agricultural assets to earn a livelihood. He wants a medium sized pond and 50 decimals of crop land in the village. He took the initiative to utilize his assets as per the advice of his uncle. This way, Rufik was eventually able to meet his family's daily nutritional requirements by cultivating fish in his pond. At the same time, he made a good profit by selling fishes and crops. Thus, he was benefited by utilizing his assets for agricultural activities. That means he has cultivated fish and he used his lands to making uh, growing crops and by this way he was benefited. Now number D. Evaluate the ways Rofik employed his agricultural assets in the context of our demand for food. We know that the population of our country or of, of the world is increasing day by day. So we have to now evaluate how Rofik employed his agricultural assets in the context of our demand for food. Okay, now we will see. Among agricultural assets, Rofik want a pond and 50 decimals of crop land. Initially, he used his land for cultivating crop. He feeds the crops to his family members and sells the rest in the market. Later, he cultivated fish to fulfill the demand for animal protein in the country. Most of the canals and rivers are being filled up and people are facing scarcity of fishes in our country. Thus, Rofik's decision to cultivate fishes is durable in economic and demand terms in the context of Bangladesh. His production fulfilled the demand of his family as well as the country. In this way, he contributes to maintain the food security of our country. So we can understand 
now you have to do the sw your sw is this one chapter 1 cq number 1 d you will write only answer in your sw my dear student don't forget to be careful in your writing in your spelling and in your sentence construction also and don't forget to mention sw number and lecture number lecture number 5 and sw number 4 okay allah face assalamu alaikum